continue our video about building a website in brackets from here. This is part two. Um, this is where we're at. We've got this video, uh, this web page already designed, and we want to start adding a little bit more functionality and a few different things to it. Remember, we're writing this whole website in brackets. We're not using any templates or anything like that. We're just writing it ourselves. So we go to um, brackets, and we can see this is our HTML, uh, HTML file, and it looks pretty good. You know, it's pretty simple. But I want to add a second page. So I'm going to go over to where my, I've got my website stored. I'm going to click on the index.html, which is the first page. I'm going to hold down the Option key on my keyboard. On some keyboards, it's called the Alt key, but on this one, it's the Option key. So I'm going to cop, hold that down and move it down here and drag it. And when I do that, it makes a duplicate copy of the actual um, HTML page. Now, I'm also going to go in there and I'm going to take the space out in between index and index 2. So there's no space because I don't want there to be a space in this web page. So I've got one called index.html, which is the one we've been working on. And I've got the new one called index2.html, which is going to be my second one. So I'm going to go back into brackets and I'm going to go file open. And I'm actually going to open from my desktop the second page so that I have two pages open. You'll see up the top here I've got um, index um, and index2 open. Now what I'm also going to do is go to view and I'm going to say vertical split. And then I'm going to drag that first one, the second one, down to the right hand side. So now you'll actually see I have on the left, I have index one right here, it's all there, and index two's on the right hand side, and the two files are exactly the same. Now, the first thing we want to do is we want page one to jump across so that it can see page two. So what we're going to look to do is put in what's called an href or a hyperlink, right? That's what we're going to Put it, call it a hyperlink, and we're going to put it in under the um, the image of the Mercedes. So I'm going to start with a bracket. I'm going to press A, and I'm going to write href equals, and then inverted commas, and I'm going to name the actual name of the second file, which you can see here is index2.html. Um, then I'm going to close that little bracket, uh, which is that. But then you'll see here. So A starts there. That's inside the first set of brackets, and then the close of the A is over here. So I need to write some sort of word in here to say we're going to jump to the next page. So let's put, write next page. Pretty simple. So now what we've got is we've got a hyperlink in here that will have the words next page that will link it across to this second page. Now obviously from the second page, it needs to go somewhere as well, so we need it to link back again. So what I'm actually going to do is copy that line, Command C, go over to this side and go Command V, except I'm going to change it not from HTML2 back to the original one, and I'm going to change it from next page to say back. Okay, so it should go back to the original page. I'm going to save both of those pages, Command S. I'm going to go to my live preview over here, and you'll see in my live preview, there's a little button down here, next page. And if I click that, it will have jumped to the next page. And then you'll see this button change back to back. So I click back, goes back. Now, I want to see a big change. I want to make sure it's really working. So what I'm going to do is on the second page, I'm going to change the background color. And I'm going to make it red. And by doing that, you'll see a huge change when we jump from one page to another. Okay. So in my background here, this looks like we're on the second page already, so I can check that by saying, look, we're on index two. Here's my back button. If I click that, there's my first page, index.html. Here's my next page. Okay, so I know that that's working. I have two pages that are jumping back and forward to each other, and that's called a hyperlink. Now, if I want to play with that hyperlink a little bit, I don't like that the word next page is next to the image, and then the image moves when I jump, so I actually want it down onto the next line. So I'm going to go back to my code, and I'm going to put in here a break. Now the break essentially is like a line break when you hit return in Word, or something like that. So it's just a BR, and that's going to push it down to the next line. Copy that. In fact, I'm going to put two of those in there. I'll put two of them in here underneath the image. Save both of those. Now if we go back and check our file, you'll see that the button has moved down, or the hyperlink has moved down under the photo. Oh, this one has it on. I need to refresh this one. Oh, I haven't saved this one. You've got to remember in brackets to save regularly. Save that. Now if I go back, it should be fine. There it is. There's my button, my link. I'm going to change it to a button shortly. 
Right, so that's the first thing. That's the first thing we want to do. We've put in a hyperlink so we can jump to the next page and then back to the first page. You can put in multiple hyperlinks to a lot of different pages and we'll, we'll get to that later on in the video, but that's what we're at at this stage. Now, the next thing is that the button itself is not very attractive. It's a little hyperlink, just a, two words. It's not very attractive. I want to actually make it into a button. So the school, uh, the website that I use is called W3 Schools. And this is it here, W3 Schools. So if you just go on to Google and you write W3 Schools and I'm going to write button. And in this case, I want a CSS button, a styled cascading style sheet buttons. Click on that and it takes you to this page. Now, this gives you the code and it gives you a preview of what the button's going to look like. So if I scroll down here and say, do I want a big button? Do I want a little button? Do I want it to be a funny shape? Do I want it to have round corners? All those sorts of things. I'm going to go right down to the very bottom and I like these ho hoverable buttons. The ones you can hover over and they change colors. They've got a border. The text changes color. I like that. So I could go in here to try yourself and you can look at the different buttons, see how they work. Now, this first button here is green. It kind of goes with my green website. So I like this first button. So I go down and look at the code on this side and it looks like, there it is, it's simple, first button. And it says it's called class button, button one. So I don't need button two, button three, four, five. I only need class button and class button one. So if I go up here to the code, I could say, all right, I, don't, I definitely need button because it's a button and I need the two parts that are for button one. All right, now it has one here, which means when you've clicked it or when it's just sitting there normal and one here when you hover your mouse over the top of it. So I'm gonna copy that section, Command C, copy that, go back to my brackets. It's a style, so I'm gonna put it into my, in between my style brackets up here. So you can see there's the open of my style, there's the close of my style. I wait, make sure that the image bracket is closed. I go to here and I can press Command V and paste all of that in there. Now I like to make sure that my indents are the same with my style sheets so that it makes it easier to read, especially when you have a lot of style that you're going through. You want to be able to read the style. So I'm just making sure that these are all in line here so that it's uh, easier to read. Now, that wasn't me knowing how to do all these buttons. That was me borrowing some code off the internet, and I'm going to use it to my advantage on the website, which is fine. I mean, you can do that. If you're doing anything in the IB, you need to reference where you got this code from. Um, but this is where I'm getting it from here, W3Schools, and just cleaning it up a little bit, and there we go. Now, we've referenced this thing called button, but we haven't actually told the button down here that it needs to be a button. So, in the href, in the A brackets where the href is, I need to write class equals two inverted commas button space button one. Remember we used button one from the W3 school, so I'm going to make sure that I've got button, which says here's the standard button, and then button one, which has the special features, which makes um, it fade in and out and do those sorts of things. I hit command S. Go to my page and let's preview my page and see if it worked. I'll just hide the W3 schools, go to here, refresh my page, and there's my button, white button. That's much better than just the hyperlink at the bottom. So if I run my mouse over it, you can see it changes color. The text goes from black to white. The background goes from white to green. It's got a nice thin border around it here, which once you've got your mouse over, you can't see it. If I click it, it works. So we haven't done it on the other page yet. We've only done it on page one. So that works. Now I can go up here and literally just copy exactly that again. Command C, go into inside the style bracket. Remember we're working inside the style bracket. Command V, go down here to where my href is and I can make that exactly the same class. Copy that, paste it here, space. Now remember, at this stage, we're doing all of our styling inside our HTML um, file. Later, we're going to use what's called a cascading style sheet, CSS, and we're going to put all this style into a different file. But at this stage, we're doing it inside the HTML just so you can see how it all works. And now you can see there's button one and there's button two. Now, this one's good because it's a light green button on a green background seems to work. But when you go to here, it's a green button on a red background, so that's not so good. So I'm going to change this button color. And I can go up here 
and I could choose, here's the green here, I could change that green and type the word red. Now I don't want it to be exactly the same as the background, so I might use maybe an orange red, see what that looks like. Um, save, go to my preview. Uh, hasn't done that yet, let's go down here somewhere. There's a green, change that to orange red. Let's just put red. Oh, no, let's put orange red. Orange red, and this one is the green as well, so let's change that to orange red. Orange red. Save all of that. Now let's have a look on this page. Right. So now you'll see it's a slightly orange red that when you roll the mouse over the buttons a different color so maybe a little bit more suitable. In fact we've got yellow writing here so we probably should have done yellow um, but again you saw how I changed that it was very easy. Yellow. This is in fact the border and this is when you hover your mouse over the top of it. Now let's have a look. Save that. That's better. It stands out a little bit. We could then change that white writing to a different color. We could change that white writing to um, red. That'll really stand out. There we go. It's gone to red. So that's a button at the bottom of the page. So we can jump from one page to another. Okay, the next thing we want to do in this video very quickly is we want to put a background in that covers the entire screen and get rid of this image, okay? Because at the moment, the, the two pages are exactly the same except for the red background. I want to change this. I want this to be a high-resolution image that covers my whole background. Okay, so there's a little bit more code in this one, but the concept is very similar to how we... Um, put an image into the picture the first in the first case, right? So let's go to uh, page two. We're not going to work on page one anymore. In fact, what I might do is go view, no split. So we're only going to work on page two. Checking them on page two. I go down to here. Now, remember what I said is, is if you do body, you can change everything inside the body, okay? Now, I want to leave the background red in case my image doesn't load or something like that. So instead, inside body here, I'm going to create a class. And this class I'm going to call, um, I'm just going to call it BG for background. So now my body has a class called background. Now I've got to go up to my style and I want to put some, some um, different styling in here. I want to put a background image. So because it's a class, I need to put a full stop and then BG. Do my um, curly brackets. Oops, not those ones. Curly brackets. And I'm going to change the background image, right? So here I'm going to write background and we find the one background image. And I've got my colon, and this time I'm going to go URL, and inside the brackets, I'm going to put inverted commas, and I want to go down and select merc2.jpg. Now, whoops, undo that, command Z here, merc2.jpg. Now, the reason I'm doing this, I'll go to my folder and show you. In my folder, I have an Im this is the little, the little image that we've been using. Low resolution, small image. In my folder, I've also put one called Merc2, which is a much bigger, higher resolution. And you can see the file size, 8K versus 517K. It's a much bigger, higher resolution image. So I'm going to put that in as my background image. So in here, I'm saying where you find the body, here, use the style that's in the class, which is here. Go up to the style, it's the class BG here, and get this background image right here. Now, once you've got that background image, what I want you to do is cover the whole back of the screen, and I want it to be 100% covering the screen. So, I need to say height, colon, space, 100%, semicolon. So, I want it to be 100% of the height of the page. I want it to be position. So, I'm going to say my background position, and I want it to be center on the page, semicolon. And then I want to have, um, I don't want it to repeat. So repeat means if you get to the edge of the back of the image, it starts to draw the image again. I don't want it to do that. I want it to just be one single image that does not repeat. Then I want to do, last but not least, I want it to cover the whole background. So this is kind of a second way to make sure that it's going to cover the entire background. I just do background size. 
and I say cover the whole thing, semicolon at the end, command S and save it. So those five lines of code are going to make this image, Merc 2, be a full size background image that covers the entire screen um, and that scales up and down when you change the size of the screen. Let's just save it. Let's go to preview and have a look. Back here, I'm on page one at the moment. Let's hit page two. And you can see there it is. My full high res image covering the background. And you can see the difference between the resolution, the quality of this image here versus this one here. We don't need this image anymore, so I'm going to go in and take that out of page two. Just go down to where my image section is, highlight that, delete that, command S, back to my page, refresh and it's gone, there's my button, it all seems to be working. So that is the end of this video. We have a high resolution background that's covering the whole image that scales with the whole page as you go. You've still got your text and everything aligned in the center. We've got buttons that jump back and forward from our first page to our second page, and we're slowly heading towards our final high quality website that we're heading for in the end.